Am I at the credits? Is that the end of the game? Are there no other cutscenes? Is it just credits now? I'm fine with that, honestly. All right, okay. Oh my goodness, I don't even know where to begin, man. Oh, how do I want to word this? Actually, during those last moments, I actually thought of something they could have added to this game that might have just, like, mostly fixed all of the issues I have with it. And I'm going to get into it here in a second. Um, before I start, probably what I'm going to do first is I'm going to talk about the few good things in this game that I did enjoy so that I can get that out of the way because I don't, you know, I'm definitely not a fan of this game. I think it's obvious to tell from the last couple hours of me playing. But, uh... That doesn't mean it's all bad. There are definitely some good things, and I want to get those out first and then get to the bad things. But before I do any of that, I'm going to say right now, you're more than welcome, obviously, it's a YouTube video, to leave your comments disagreeing with me or pointing out what you think I was wrong about or anything. But I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm so done with this game, I'm not going to be responding in any comments. You're more than welcome to leave your comment however you want. Don't expect me to be replying to it because I'm like, I do not want to get into any comment arguments over this game. I'm so beyond done with this game that I don't even want to think about it anymore. I'm about to get out all I want to say about it, and then I'm putting Vesperia behind me, and that's the end of that. You're more, leave your comments, whatever, just, you know, don't get mad if I don't respond to your comment, because I'm not going to, because I know what'll happen is I'm about to give all the things I think are wrong with the game, and what they should have done differently, and whatnot, and then people are going to leave comments being like, well, actually, I thought that you're wrong about this, and that that's, this is whatever, this was fine, and you were just wrong about it. That's fine if you feel that way, but I'm going to tell you how I feel about the game, exactly what I think is wrong with the game on numerous different factors, and... You know, if you feel differently, that's fine. But what I'm about to say is straight up, like, fact. This is what it is about the game. Because I've got all the footage to prove it in the past 120-whatever videos. I'm going to tell you straight up what I think is wrong with the game and everything. And if you feel differently, good for you. I'm glad someone else enjoyed it. I know a lot of people enjoy this game. This is a very popular Tales game for reason I personally can't fathom. Other than I think there were a lot of people who only had Xbox growing up. And so they played this game because it was the only Tales of on Xbox. So, you know, I'm sure that's not the case for everyone, but I think that might be the case for quite a few people who hype this game up. But, uh, you know, I'm gonna give my reasoning and all that, and, you know, I know what I'm gonna say is true because I just played through the whole game and I know for a fact you might feel differently about it, but what I'm saying is straight up what happened in the game and why I think it's bad. So, uh, I have no, I feel no need to defend my points in the comments, and I really don't want to argue about this game with people in comments because I've already argued with a couple of comments, uh, in previous videos, and I am definitely, I'm done with it. So, uh, you know, I'm just gonna get through it. But, uh, first of all, the things I thought were good about the game. Mostly, the only good things I can think of to tell about the game, for the most part, is the fact that, uh, there are some really cool characters. Uh, mainly, Raven is really cool. I love his backstory, I love his whole deal with Schwan, and the fact that he fought in the war, and he stayed alive by Blastia, and so he worked for, uh, Alexei as a result of that, and all of that good stuff. Um... I really like Yuri and Flynn. They're both very cool characters, although Flynn doesn't show up very much, so I feel that kind of takes away from it a bit, but, uh, because he's just not in the game enough, I would have preferred it if he was in the game for more rather than less, but it definitely feels like he's in less of the game. But, uh, Yuri, Flynn, and Raven are all three very high-tier characters. I really like their, uh, development and them as people. So, uh, I really wish all three of them had been in better Tales of games. Uh, so, those are pretty much the only good things I know to say about the game, to be honest. Because I'm trying to think of anything else that really stuck out to me throughout the game that was really good. But all I can think of is all the stuff that was really bad. Like, I don't have any compliments to give the combat system, other than the fact that Yuri's Mystic Art looks really cool. But, you know, almost all Mystic Arts always look really cool. So, you know, there's that. But, uh, Yuri's Mystic Art is pretty sick. But I don't really have any compliments to give the battle system. I don't really have any compliments to give the skill system or anything like that. Uh, I might have some, like, half compliments, half insults that'll be weaved in when I talk about skills and all that in a little bit. Uh, I don't have any other characters I really want to compliment. Judith, I guess, was okay. She was, like, a fine character. I'll talk more about her as well in a second. But, uh, so I can't really think of any other... I don't have any compliments to give to the story at all, so... Pretty much the only good things I can say about the game is that Flynn, Yuri, and Raven are all really great, and I really like them. And Repeat. Repeat is really cool, but, you know, he's a dog. The fact that he exists is cool, but, you know, he can't really elevate himself any higher or lower because the the entire thing of repeat is that he's a dog who is like yuri's best friend that's really all there is to his character he's a dog he can't really have any more character development or any deterioration so that makes him an okay character or a good character even in my book because he's a freaking dog but i can't really as much as i love repeat i can't really say he's a great character because he doesn't really have much character outside of being a really cool looking dog who is very loyal to Yuri. That's really all there is to him. So, you know, he's fairly one-dimensional because he's a dog. So, I just didn't want people to think like, oh, you're saying Repeat is terrible, but he's such a cool dog. Now, Repeat's cool, but, you know, he's a dog. So, you know. But uh, I'm going to get into, and the credits might actually be ending here in a second. Even if the credits end, I'll keep going until I'm done saying everything I have to. But I'm going to get into all the things that are, 
I think are just awfully wrong with this game. First thing I'm going to tackle is the combat system, which I, you know, talked about a good deal in my anger in the middle of that final fight before I decided to just switch to easy mode and call it a day. Uh, the combat system in this game is just not fun. It's just not fun. Every time you get knocked down or the enemy gets knocked down, and eventually I got the skill where I could jump back up, and that made it a little bit better, yeah. But it was still like, you get knocked down, you get invincibility frames. Uh, if you have the jump up skill, great. If you don't, then you're just stuck on the ground for a little bit there. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the jump up skill itself when I talk about skills, because I have a little bit I want to talk about skills as well. But uh, the combat system is just so bad. When you're using your arts, the enemy can just get like nudged aside if another one of your this happens a lot in boss battles because basically almost every boss battle is your four members against one occasionally like two enemies and then you kill one and it's down to one enemy after you kill one of them so you uh you're using your art to hit them and this is especially awful when you're an overlimit trying to do your mystic art and the enemy gets nudged slightly out of the way and so your move just misses but even though your move is just missing all of a sudden, you still have to go through the entire attack animation. So you're stuck there, like with Yuri spinning his sword with Shining Dragon Swarm. Ah, that's, that's a nice picture right there. You're stuck with, uh, what's his face, spinning his, Yuri spinning his sword there, and the enemy is slightly to your left. You're missing entirely. And if you're in your over limit trying to use a Mystic Art, you're gonna miss your chance to Mystic Art. Wait, this might have voice acting. Oh, it, it fell. Probably was being kept up by Blastia, I guess. Ah, Ba'ul. Anything? That it? I think we're done. Defeated the Autophagos. Any cutscenes or anything? It might give me cutscenes after this. Let me see if we get any cutscenes here, then I'm going to continue, if we do or don't. If we do, then I'll go through the cutscenes, then I'll talk about it, but let me get through this real quick. In save? Yes. Any cutscenes, or are we done? We're done. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to... Oh, you can do a new game. That's not happening. I didn't mean to click on the credits again. Uh, I want to hit a button so that it doesn't start playing the opening sequence. But uh, I'm just going to talk for a bit here. The rest of the video you see is just me talking about what I don't like about the game. So if you don't care to hear that, feel free to click out of the video now. There's your warning. But uh, I'm going to finish talking about what I think is wrong with the game. So, uh, but yeah, anyways, you're using an art. And then your art, the enemy gets nudged slightly because Flynn comes up from the side and hits him. And then you're stuck there in the middle of the animation, unable to do anything. You can't get your Mystic Art off because you're no longer hitting the enemy. Because the Mystic Art can only be procced at the end of the hit. Trust me, I know. I hold, as soon as I use the art while trying to get a Mystic Art, I hold X the whole time. So it is not... Don't go in the comments telling me like, oh no, Chaos, actually, if you just hold X, it does it immediately. No, it doesn't. It only does it when it gets to the end of the animation. That's the only time it will proc. I've tried to get it to proc earlier. It does not. If you think it does, you're mistaken. Go play the game again and you'll see that it does not. Maybe in the older version of the game it did, but in this definitive edition, it does not proc until it gets to the end of the attack animation. And if you're not hitting the enemy at the end of that attack animation, the enemy isn't getting hit. The Mystic Art will not proc. It's just absolutely terrible. Also, until you get some skills to help it, and even after that, you can get stunned in the overlimit. It makes the overlimit just seem worthless if you can just get stunned during it, because then it's time-based, and it runs out pretty darn quick. You only stay in overlimit for, like, what, 10 seconds, maybe? 10 to 15 seconds? It doesn't last long, so the fact that you can get stunned out of it, especially in the early game, where they can just, like, juggle you and make it where you can't do anything, rather than just stun hitting you, because I did get a couple of skills late, pretty late in the game, that made it easier to manage, but it was still not the best. And I'm pretty sure some of those skills I had to specifically synthesize for because someone in comments told me like, hey, synthesize this weapon, it'll make Overlimit better, you'll, you won't you will regret it. And they were right, it did make it better, but it was still not great. So the combat system is just, it's just jank. And the fact that when you hit enemies down and they get invincibility frames, you can't really hit them at all. You might get lucky and hit them, like if you try and do the down attack or if you like go into free run and then hit them, you might get a hit in, or they might just have invincibility frames through it all. It's terrible. It makes the combat so disjointed and just not enjoyable to me. And maybe that isn't the case for some other people that play, but for me, it just made the combat very enjoyable and way less fluid. One of the most important things that I feel in combat is fluidity, that like the combat keeps mostly in constant motion and going, and that's why I never play as mages and stuff. Like, I was talking about that one commenter who said he played as Estelle to cast the healing himself. That sounds like so much less fun to me to just be like, go to a corner, press like two buttons to use a magic move, healing or attack-wise, whatever, and then you just sit there for like five to ten seconds letting the animation play out. I want to be up in the fight moving using combos and using arts and all that. That's way more enjoyable to me. But, uh, this game just does it so poorly compared to so many other Tales games, like Zillia, Zesteria, Berseria, 
etc. are just so much better combat-wise, so much more fluid and so much more enjoyable than this one was. The combat in this was just awful, and that's all I'm going to say on the combat, so that's the end of that. Um, my room is very, very hot. I think that my air conditioner might be broken, and I need to get that fixed. Or actually, the filter thing probably just needs changed. I'm going to do that as soon as this is done. Uh, what else? What else do I need to talk about? I want to talk about the skill system. I'll do that next. What other than that? The story and then the characters. That's all I have left to say. Yeah, those three things. So, uh, the skill set. Uh, at the start of the game, I thought it was really cool. And I still think it's a really cool concept, in theory. Where you get weapons, and you can, like, synthesize the weapons into bigger weapons, and gain new weapons that give you the skills, and you use them, and then you learn the skill, and then you can put the skill on with SP. The problem is, is that there is too little SP and too many skills. Because the further and further I got into the game, it started, at the early game I was like, yo, even if this weapon is slightly worse, use it, learn the skill, because you want the skill. The further I got into the game, the more I got to the point where I'm like, what does it matter if I learn this skill? Because A, there are too many, I'm never going to learn them all anyways. And B, I don't have enough SP to use them, because so many of the skills, there are so many skills in the game, and all of them take, most of, or a lot of them take, like, 3 to 5 SP, and you only have, like, I don't know, 50 SP or all. I'm going to friggin' look, I'm going to friggin' look. How much SP did I even have in this game? Let me see, I'm going to load up an older save file so that I know I'm not, I don't know what happens when you load the end save. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, put me back here. How, how much skill points do I have? 82. Okay, so more than I thought. More than I thought. That's fair. Stop. 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 Everyone's got a round 80. Everyone's got a round 80. Look at... Look. Friggin' combo plus. Pretty important skill, I think. Cost 10. Where's the Mystic Art one? Uh, Mystic Art one costs 5. It's a good deal. Uh, combo plus cost 10, like I said. Uh, most things cost... Why can't I... Oh, I'm set to only attack. Okay. That makes sense. But, uh... Look at it, like, over let me concentrate. A lot of the important ones cost, like, 10, and then all the other smaller ones... Oh, these are the ones I have set. Good. Cost, like, 2 or 3. Look at I have all of these skills right here. I have, like, a little, like, a page and a half or something of skills. And a lot of them are pretty expensive. Stop. Look at all of my skills. Look at them all. Look at all these wasted skills that I just can't use because I don't have enough SP and because there are too many. And I stopped learning skills when I got later in the game. I still have plenty of weapons where I could probably learn at least, like, 10 more skills. If I went through synthesis, I'd probably have, like, 20 more skills to learn. There are too, there are too many, and they're too expensive with how little SP the game gives you. I don't know why I'm using so little my SP right now. Actually, I could equip a few more there, whatever. But, uh... There, there are just too many skills with too little for you to utilize in this game. It's ridiculous. And the fact that freaking Item Thrower... Where is it? Item Thrower costs seven! Seven SP! I'm fine with it being a skill you have to equip, but it should cost, like, three at the most. The fact that it takes seven SP to be able to use items on your friends instead of having to force them all to use it is asinine. Thank goodness they let you use life bottles whenever you want, because if they didn't, I would lose my frigging mind. I would have quit this game without a doubt. Holy cow, it's just... it's terrible. It's terrible, man. It's such a cool concept to have the skills be linked to the weapons and learn them through that. But then when you have just too many to learn, and you have too many skills that you can't even use them all, and too many of the important ones are too expensive to let you mix around and use some of the lower tier ones, or the other mid tier ones, it's just awful. By the end of- when I got later in the game, I just stopped caring. I was like, why do I even care anymore? It's too much- it's too much work for too little reward with how little I can use the skills and how there are too many to learn. It, it was just terrible, man. It, it was a really good concept that I think was just not not horribly done, but subparly done. It could have been better. They could have put more effort into it and made it better, but they didn't. So that's all I have to say on the skill set stuff. Um, I want to talk about character or stories or storyline. I think I'm going to talk about both at once. Let me go through all the main characters, and then I'll talk about the storyline and the villains. And I did mention that I had an idea that I think would have made the game better overall, which also is going to point out, like, a random thing that happened in this game that I don't understand why it exists, which I'll get to that at the very end, because I'm going to talk about that last. But, uh, I'll do the main story characters, I'm going to talk about how I feel about them, and then the storyline, and then I'll be done, I promise. Uh, first of all, I already said the good things about the game. Raven, Flynn, and Yuri are all really cool characters. I really like their character archetypes, the way that they work, how they are as characters, the way that, uh, Flynn and Yuri play off of one another, how Raven himself, just on his own, is a really funny and really cool character. He's really well designed. Uh, so let's get to the others. Uh, Judith. Judith is fine. I don't really have anything against Judith. She's a really mysterious character. You don't learn a whole lot about her throughout the game, I feel like. And before any of you say, well, okay, so that's because you didn't do the 87 optional side quests. I played other Tales games. I know that there are optional side quests in Zillia that I never played. And I know that they're in Abyss that I never played. I never did the optional side quest stuff in Abyss and Zillia. Those are still my two favorite games, mostly because I love the characters. I love the characters and the character development they got in the main story. 
I shouldn't have to go off to all the side. If I want to learn more about the characters and do the side quest stuff, that's awesome that it's there. But if I go through all of your main story stuff and I feel like your characters are bad, then you failed the characters. I didn't fail the game by not playing through the side quest stuff. You messed up by not making the characters good enough in the main story. If the only way to make them likable or make them better is off of the side quest stuff that is very easy to miss. So there's my rebuttal to that preemptive response. Um, Judith just... She was a really mysterious, cool character, and then she never really went anywhere. They never really did anything with her. So, you know, that's all. She's an okay character. She never got uh, to be a better character because they never did anything with her. Uh, Estelle is pretty much the same way as uh, Judith. Uh, she got a little more attention in character development, I feel like, than Judith did. But still, I was I never was really invested in Estelle. I didn't find her that great of a character either. I don't really have much to say on her. Uh, they have three children in this game. Rita is pretty mature. She, she's not necessarily a children, but Carol, Rita, and Patty. Three kid characters. That's too many. You shouldn't have more than one, honestly, but two is pushing it. Three is just ridiculous, but they kind of circumvented it a bit with the way Rita acted. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Sundarius, especially when, like, the only thing they have going for them is that they're Sundari. Rita's entire personality, I feel like, basically comes down to two things. First of all, she's a Sundari. Great. You know, I don't have anything against that archetype, but it's not really my bag, baby. You know what I mean? So she didn't really catch me on that. The only other thing that Rita really has going for her character is that she's a Blastia genius. They talk about Rita like she's just flat out a genius, but she's really only smart when it comes to Blastia. Rita never adds to anything or talks about anything until something Blastia related comes up. So like, you know, Jade Curtis from Abyss is a genius character. He's smart in like everything he does. He's smart with like uh, magic, with uh, being a military commander, uh, trying to raise the dead and failing because that's like impossible to do, but he attempted it. All that other stuff. Jade was like a, he was a genius. Rita isn't really a genius. She's like really smart about one topic, Blastia. You know, I'm really smart about one topic. I know a lot about Digimon. Does that make me a genius because I'm really knowledgeable on Digimon and stuff like that? I don't think so. So, you know, She's definitely, like, really... Rita is really smart, especially about Blastia, but she never really acts smart about anything unless it's about Blastia. That's the only time she's intelligent. And anytime something bad happens, Rita just comes in like, oh, that's right, I'm the smart character, so she fixes it through Blastia. Or spirits in this case, which go hand in hand because Blastia becomes spirits, etc., etc. So, you know, she never... Rita just seemed like a very one-note, not very interesting character to me. Carol, small child, very annoying, very happy-go-lucky. He's the character of the story that's just like, I believe in good can overcome all, and we don't have to worry about bad things happening, because if we just all act good, then there's never going to be any bad. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And I just really don't like that character archetype very much. It can be done well, but I'm not a huge fan of when a character is all just like, we'll just do everything good, and it will all be good. Definitely don't worry. And that's how Carol comes across. Um... That's not to say that I don't like, like, do-gooder characters, like characters who are good and try and do good, because that's a character that I really like in Jude. Jude Mathis is a very, is a character who is very, like, you know, try and do the best thing that we can, try and be the good guy, and he does it very well in his game. Carol is a step beyond that, I feel, in that he just feels everything can be hunky-dory if you really need it to be, if you really put in the effort. And sometimes life just doesn't work that way, which is something that Yuri and Flynn realize very well, and they do, that's part of the reason they are both very good characters in this Thing. Uh, the last thing, the last character, uh, because I already talked about Repeat, you know, he's cool, he's a dog, but, you know, he can't really have much character because he's a dog, uh, is Patty. When I played this game, I knew that this game had another character added in from the original one. I thought that Flynn existed in the original game, but wasn't a playable character. And in this game, in the Definitive Edition, in the PS3 version in Japan, they made him playable, and that's what they were talking about. I have since learned that Patty did not exist in the original Tales of Vesperia. She was added into the redone version in PS3 version, and then therefore is in this Definitive Edition. I think this game would be far better without Patty. I think Patty is the worst character in this game. She is way too, like, pushed on this whole, like, Yarg, I'm a pirate, better say pirate things every chance I get especially later in the game, and she's an annoying little kid, and for some reason she's Eifried. Eifried is such a cool myth a lot, like myth usually focused on as a myth kind of legendary deal. In the Tales of, in numerous Tales of series, they did him great in Berseria with him being the captain of the Van Eltia, he was a good friend of Aizen, and you end up having to fight his daemon form and all that. It was so well done, but for some reason in this game, first of all, he didn't do the Black Hope Massacre, instead he like, his first mate did it, and then Eifried turned himself into a small girl? Like, into a, apparently Patty is 14, I was told. I thought she was, like, 9, but apparently she's 14. Eifried, who I had to have assumed was, like, a middle-aged man, somehow, I was told that this is what you find out if you do the side quest stuff, which I'm definitely never doing for Patty, because I could not care less about her. 
Eifried used some kind of magic power to turn himself into a 14-year-old girl with amnesia. And then that girl falls in love with Yuri and is very, very annoying with her constant, like, oh, I love Yuri, Yuri, marry me, etc. I hate it so much. It's such a terrible character archetype. It's asinine. I can't believe that they added that character. The fact that that character wasn't originally in the game blows my mind. Why would you add such an awful character to the game? It astounds me. Oh man, Patty is the worst in this game, except for maybe Alexei. But uh, you know what? No, it's Patty because you have to deal with Patty for more of the game. Alexei eventually vanishes. Uh, so there's my stuff with the characters. I'm going to talk about the story and maybe talk about the villain characters a bit as I do, and some other characters. Uh, first of all, the Dawn and Bellius were very cool characters early in the game, uh, and then they both died. Like, almost immediately after you met them. Like, within, like, you meet Dawn, and then you meet Bellius, and within within an hour of meeting Bellius, Bellius dies. After meeting the Dawn, there's maybe five hours of gameplay. Not all of that gameplay is spent learning about the Dawn or talking to the Dawn. He just shows up a little bit and then vanishes. And then the Dawn dies. A really cool, interesting character who could have done something more throughout the game, and still died. The fact that he died is fine, but you could have done more with him first. But now he's just dead. He's gone. That's, that's all you get to hear about the Dawn. Nothing more. It's lame. I hate it. Uh, the Hunting Blades? The Hunting Blades do basically nothing in this game. Apparently you can fight them in the Colosseum afterwards or something. Who cares? But uh, they just show up every now and then and they're like, We kill monsters! And it's like, no. No, we're not going to let you do that. And then, lo and behold, there it goes. So, they just felt... N uh, Zoggy, very much the same character. He shows up and he's like, I'm crazy! Fight me! And then he dies only to come back and then finally, finally die in that last battle. I don't even know why he was... Why did Duke even let him in there? I have no idea at all. It blows my mind. But uh, I'm going way too long with this. This I, this is probably going to be like a 30 minute video or something. I'm not going to make a video that's just me ranting about the game. But I really, I've got to get this all out so I never have to talk about it again. Um, the storyline is ridiculous in this game. Stuff just kind of happens and then we move on with it. And that normally happens in JRPGs, especially early on in them. You know, something will happen and then the characters get swept into it and it moves on. But then normally when you get about halfway through a JRPG, things start to narrow down a bit and you really get focused on, like, a storyline that may link into another storyline. Like, in Zillia, you know, it's pretty, uh... No, Zillia is actually pretty straightforward from the start. It's random that, like, Jude runs into Mila, and then they do the Lance of Kresnik stuff, but then the game is focused, like, Mila and Jude do what they can until they can get rid of the Lance of Kresnik, and then it switches... Then you beat Noctigal, and then it's like, oh, now we have to learn about Olympias and all that. It moves into the secondary storyline, which it does pretty smoothly, I feel like. You know, that happens. This game, it just... Stuff happens. It just jumps all over the place. You go and you meet the Dawn, and then you're like, oh, you gotta start Barbatos because he's trying to kill the Dawn or something, and so you go and deal with uh, his tower and all that. Then uh, you have to go deal with it. It's like, you gotta go talk to Bellius. This is something happened. You gotta go talk to Bellius. And then it's like, oh, Bellius is here. Oh, Bellius is dead. Now we gotta go talk to the Dawn. Oh, the Dawn is dead. Well, what do we do now? Uh, let's try and get revenge on Jaeger or something. I don't remember exactly. And then uh, it's like, oh, now Alexei is evil. I'm sorry, Alexei is evil? Who's Alexei again? Oh, he's the Commandant. Oh yeah, we met him once in that one city. I remember that guy. He's evil? Yeah, why? I don't know. But he is, because we need another villain. Oh, uh, now there's this Temple of Z the, the Hercules thing exists, and we gotta deal with that. Oh, now there's a Temple of Zade. Uh, you thought Pharaoh was an enemy? No, you're never gonna fight Pharaoh. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, now we gotta deal with Zade? Oh, now the Autophagos is here. We heard about that in the Jellyfish place. Oh yeah, that's just been there the whole time. That's a bit of a reveal. And now Alexei is dead, so... Who's the villain? Is it the Autophagos? No, that thing's too big to fight. Uh, Duke. Duke's the final villain. Oh, Duke, the guy we ran into like three times who helped us out and seemed to be on our side. He's he's the final villain now. Yeah. Because we need one. So there you go. Um, the story is just so random and sudden and disjointed and none of the villains really get enough build up at all. Barbatos didn't really get any build up at all. Uh, Alexei got... Alexei was out of nowhere. He was just out of left field. He was suddenly the villain after getting showing up maybe like twice in the entire game. And it was just like, yes, I'm evil and I want to use Zade to do something. What do you want to do with it, Alexei? I don't know. I'll die before I have to talk about it, so don't worry. So random and so terrible. Absolutely awful. Um, Duke was a kind of cool character that I feel like if he had gotten more development, could have been used well. But they really just, he showed up every now and then being like, yes, I sided with the Antilochia. And then being like, oh, I'm going to kill all the humans because humans suck. And I was like, well, you know. You may have a point there, but also why? So, you know, it's just all just came suddenly out of nowhere. The story was just random and wasn't done well. I felt like I, I just didn't like it. It didn't build up the characters enough around it. You know, the, a good story also needs good characters going through it to make it work. But uh, I really, a bad story can be carried by good characters, I feel like. Good characters can carry a bad story, de depending on how bad the story is. Uh, a bad story, or a good story, I feel like really isn't going to work if it's got a bunch of bad characters. You have to have good characters with the story to make the story work. This game didn't do very well with either. 
for the most part. Like, Yuri, Yuri, Flynn, and Raven, as good characters as they were, couldn't carry this story because the story was just too bad and too sudden and poorly done. Um, okay, anything else? So, there was one thing I was thinking of. They talk about this war so much, and I really don't... This is just something I don't understand. Is uh, I think the city is called Yormgen. We go to that city called Yormgen once, and as soon as I went into it, I was like, oh, dude, this is in the past. We've somehow gone back in time. Like, I knew it the second I saw it. I was like, we're back in time. How are they get They're going to tie time travel into this story somehow. And depending on how they do it, time travel can... It's hard to, but time travel can be done. And I personally, for me, I'm normally very forgiving with time travel stuff. You have to mess up time travel. You have to use time travel very, very poorly for me to be against it. As long as you do okay with time travel, I'm normally into it. But, uh... I was like, they're gonna include time travel in the story somehow. When we go back to Jormgen the second time, it's suddenly the time travel stuff is gone. It's just like, yeah, this place is actually destroyed. And it's never touched on again. They never mention it again. It never has any impact. No one ever talks about, like, why did this happen or anything. Like, in the moment, they're shocked. Like, what happened to the city? Why did this... What, what went on? Why is it no longer like it was? And Duke was in that past as well. And he was like, you shouldn't be able to be here in the past. In this place where it's like this. And I was like... Where did this go? Where did this storyline go? Why was this even in existence if you weren't going to do anything with it? And they did nothing with it. It astounds me. I have no idea what the deal was there. I really just am lost as to why that existed. But uh, as it was happening, I was thinking to myself, you know, like, if they had lent into time travel a bit more, maybe they could have had the group gone back to when the war happened or something. They could have met Raven back when he was Schwann and all that. Uh, they could have met Duke and a Lucifer, and they could have really built Duke up as a character more. Maybe they could have even run into Alexei, because Alexei looks pretty old. He probably had something to... He was probably a soldier or something in the war, or maybe even a general who did stuff in the war. He definitely did, because Raven said that Alexei saved him in the war, and that's why Raven works for Alexei. And Jaeger appeared to be in about the same boat, somehow, because he had the same, like, uh, Blastia thing going on that Raven did. So they could have had us gone back to the war or something, and really they could have built up Alexei as, the char as a character. They could have given us a little more backstory on maybe even seeing young Judith and Baul. Could have given us some more backstory on them, more backstory on uh, Raven and Jaeger even. Made Jaeger mean something more than just being the German guy who showed up from time to time. Um, they could have given us a lot more on a Lucifer and Duke and, like, set him up to be the final villain a lot better than they did. And really, like, they could have lent into that one skit that we saw where they could have talked a lot more about the whole needing an equal thing you need other, like, friends and relationships with people who are as strong as you are to kind of keep you in check. You know what I mean? They really, really could have led, like, leaned hard into that theme in this game, and I felt it would have been a lot better. And going back into the war would have shown us a lot of, like, Alexei not having someone or feeling like he didn't have someone to fill that role for him. Zoggy being against uh, Yuri, so that would have been a lesser one, but it could have been in there. Duke and a Lucifer being together and Duke losing a Lucifer. They could have really lent into that theme a lot. I feel like that theme would have fit this game a lot better than whatever theme they were trying to go for. So, uh, th there are just so many things they could have done better, and they didn't even necessarily have to lean into time travel. I just feel like Alexei and Duke both really, really needed more build-up as villains to not only make them as villains seem better, to, like, work better. Like, Barbatos, who cares? He went off early. He was the early first villain. Like, you can always have that one throwaway villain. Barbatos was that. He didn't need anything more than what he got, really. But uh, they really, really could have, like, built up Duke and Alexei more, and that would have made the story smoother. Just making those two villains work better and having more reasoning and more build-up, the whole Autophagos thing was good enough. Kind of, It was really, like, out of nowhere a little bit, but it could have worked well enough if they had just put more focus on those two villains and why they were doing what they were doing and giving them more character. But they didn't. They didn't, and so I feel like the game heavily, heavily suffers for it. And so that's why I don't like this game. This might actually be my least favorite Tales of game. That's really saying something when I played, uh... I played Symphonia not when I was young. I played it when I was older, so I don't have that nostalgia for Symphonia. And I don't think Symphonia is great, but Symphonia is good enough. It's pretty, pretty alright. And, uh, Zestaria is... Overall, I'd say it's bad, but the gameplay... At least when I was playing Zestaria... I enjoyed the gameplay, so it didn't make me want to quit. As much as I wasn't invested in the story and I didn't care for more than, like, two characters at most, I still had fun mechanically playing Zestaria. A lot of times I didn't have that in Vesperia. And I would have powered through that a lot easier if there were more good characters and the story was a lot better. But because those were also subpar to bad, it really just didn't make going through the awful combat worth it. So, uh, there you have it. I probably ranted for like 25 minutes or more there, so I apologize, but you chose to watch it, I warned you, so don't say I wasted your time, you chose to use your time like this. But, you know, I didn't want to rant as hard as I did on this game without giving what I feel could have maybe not made it a perfect game or like a great game, but could have made it a better game. 
And I really feel like some kind of a little bit of time travel going back to the war and building up Alexei and Duke as characters, letting us see a Lucifer and seeing that relationship, and then really pushing a lot harder on the whole, like, you need other people with power with you to kind of keep you in check thing. And Alexei, and then later Duke, because he lost to Lucifer, didn't have that. And that's why they ended up losing to Yuri, because Yuri had Flynn and Estelle and all the others to be that for him. That really would have been a powerful theme to go with in this game, but they just, they didn't really do it. They just threw it away in one skit to be like, hey, wouldn't it have been cool if we focused on this? But nah, we didn't for some reason. So, I'm done. I think that's it. So, I'm sorry if you really like this Tales game and I ragged on it so much. You know, I'm glad you enjoyed it even though I didn't. But, uh, you know, those things happen and ha stuff like that happens and I really wanted, I want to get through every Tales game, so I had to play it. So here we are. But, uh, that's that. That's the end of the playthrough. So, I'm not going to be doing any post-game stuff, obviously. I think you could all guess that from the last little while of gameplay. Uh, I'll be uh, playing other Tales games, of course, in the future, so I uh, I can't promise that I'll like all the Tales games in the future I play, but I assure you, there are, I've enjoyed more Tales games than I've disliked Tales games. So this is probably the only one that I've straight out just did not enjoy practically at all. Even Zestaria, I enjoyed the gameplay. But uh, most Tales games I play, I enjoy a lot, and they're normally more enjoyable playthroughs as a result. So hopefully uh, you'll give my playthroughs a chance in other Tales of games that I play future and older ones I haven't played yet, because I'm going to try and play them all. But uh, that's that's going to be it. So I'm going to be starting a Digimon playthrough. Uh, I'll probably get another Tales of playthrough started sometime this year. I really want to go back and play the oldest Tales games. I want to play like the first one in the series relatively soon, because I've played most of the recent ones. This is the 10th in the series. I haven't played the 11th in the series. I think that's either Tales of Innocence or Tales of Hearts. I think Innocence and Hearts are 9 and 11, but I don't know which is which. But uh, I haven't played the 11th game, and I haven't played the 9th game. But I played the 8th, which was Abyss, and then I played this one, which is the 10th. And then I played 12 onward, because it's Graces is 12, and then Zillia, Zillia 2, Zestaria, Berseria. I played all of those, and I played Symphonia. So I haven't played 1 through 4, I haven't played 9 and 11, and I haven't played 6 and 7. So I want to go back and play some of the older ones as I wait for... Hopefully we'll get a 17th game in the series in the near future, in the next year or two. Because it's been... Uh, Berseria came out, like, what, two, three years ago? So it's been a while. We deserve another one about now. I think Berseria came out 17. Pretty certain. And it's 19 now, so... But uh, I'll be playing other Tales games. Hopefully that I'll enjoy more than this one. But, uh, yeah. I think that's really all I have to say, so... Again, sorry if this is your favorite Tales game or if you just really enjoy this Tales game and uh, I kind of ripped it apart. But, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Hopefully I'll see you in other playthroughs, Tales or otherwise. Thank you so much for sitting through all of this playthrough, even when I got very, very perturbed at the way the game was going. Uh, I appreciate it greatly. And I hope you enjoyed, rather you didn't agree with me ripping it apart, or if you enjoyed because, like, yes, finally someone else doesn't like this game just like I don't, maybe. Uh, that's always a possibility. Although, if you didn't like this game, I doubt you'd be looking up playthroughs of it. But, uh, you know, you never know. Uh, I know Lone Wolf doesn't like this game very much either, because he told me as much, and he's watching this, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, I'm with you, Lone Wolf. I'm with you. We're on the right side of history, as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, feel free to leave your comments with your rebuttals to what I said. Rather, you think, uh, my idea of the time travel thing was stupid, or if you think I was wrong about certain things in the story that I said were bad. Like I said, I'm not going to be responding to comments in this, except maybe for Lone Wolf, because he'll probably just agree with me, and I'll just say, like, yeah, dude. He might add something like, I also thought this was bad, and I'll be like, yep, you're right. Or, no, I think that was okay. But I'm not going to get into large argument comments in this video. I've, I'm all Vesperia out. This past, like, 30 or so minute video of me explaining why I don't like Vesperia is about all I want to do for arguing against Vesperia. So... I've given my points, and I will let them rest there. But, uh, again, obviously, you know, it's a free country, at least in America. And, uh, I post videos from America, so you can put whatever you want in the comments, because you're allowed to. So, uh, as long as it's not something stupid, just like, you know, cursing me out saying I'm a stupid idiot, that might, that comment might get removed. But, uh, you're more than welcome to put your rebuttals if you'd like to. And I'll probably read them, I just won't, most likely won't respond. So, there you go. That's all. We're finally done. Uh, for those of you who really like Digimon, because I know a lot of people on my channel are really into Digimon, it's like the biggest thing on my channel, I got a Digimon playthrough coming now that this is done. It'll be up like within a week of this being out, if not even sooner than that, so you can look forward to it. And like I said, probably in the next couple of months, I'm going to try and get to the first, I think it's Tales of Fantasia, I'm going to try and get to some of the older Tales games, so obviously there will be more Tales games happening on the channel. Uh, Tales of Vesperia has not turned me off from the series or anything like that, not by a long shot. But uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope to see you in other playthroughs, tales or otherwise. And uh, have, a, have a good day, evening, whatever it might be for you. I hope to see you in other vids. Until then, farewell.